Hey folks, welcome back to the kitchen here at Mark Kelly Farm. What we're going to do for you today is what I like to call a newlywed meal. It's something if you're newly married and you haven't got a lot of experience cooking and you want to put something good on the table for your spouse, this would be a good quick and easy idea. So come along for the ride. Girls are out having fun in the snow. You guys are crazy. So we're going to do what's called Salisbury steak. It's very simple to make. And back in the day, it was something that uh, a housewife would grab out of the freezer to make a quick meal for her husband. It came in a little TV tray dinner and you just heated it up in the oven. But you can make it at home. It's going to be much, much better. <laughs> uh, it's not going to be one of those freezer meals. So let's get after it. We've got some of our good Nebraska ground beef uh, thawed out. So we're going to cut this open. This is a one pound chub. We're going to make two half pound patties out of this. And I'll do that and we'll get them going. Got our two big burger patties made out. I just press them down in the plate. So now we're going to heat up our pan, so we'll set the fire to this thing. You want to heat your pan before you add your oil. Anytime you're using a pan that's not non-stick, the reason you do that is because it'll keep it from sticking so much. Heat the pan, put the oil in, heat the oil, then add your food. We are heating up our skillet. I cut up two large potatoes. I like to figure one large potato for each person when I make mashed potatoes and that's what I'm going to do with those. So when those come up to a boil, I'll put those on simmer. So let's get our meat into the pan over here. After we heated our pan, we put about two tablespoons of vegetable oil in there and then we let that heat up. We've got our meat in now. We're going to wait till the blood comes to the start showing on the top of the hamburger and then that's the time to flip it over. Now, if you wanted a little crust on these, you could have patted some flour on the outside of these and shake off the excess, and that would give you a little bit more crust. But we're going to serve this with the gravy, so we don't really need to worry about that step. We're just going to season them up nice. So after I threw the hamburger in, I went downstairs in the basement into our freezer, got some corn for dinner. You've seen me use these vegetables before. They're a real good, quick, easy vegetable for dinner. This is uh, steams in six minutes in your microwave. If you look at the ingredients, corn. So you can't beat it. You don't have to worry about what's in it. So I just throw it in the microwave in here. And then we're, we're about six minutes away from dinner. We'll fire that up. All right, you see how the blood's running out of the top there? That's oozing out. That's what you want to look for. So we're going to flip these over. I can't do it one-handed because I want to tilt the skillet and get all the oil so I don't splash. Looks beautiful. Now we're going to put some seasoning on here. I like to do it after I flip it so the seasoning doesn't burn on the bottom of the pan. And when I take these out of the pan, I'll flip them over and season the other side. Now we're going to wait until we see the juices come up again, but this time we'll wait till the juices come out clear. You don't want to smash your hamburger patties. It's the worst mistake you can make. So if you cook in a restaurant, please don't smash my hamburger patties. I like the juice left in them. Our potatoes have come to a boil, so now we've got them on simmer. We're just going to let those simmer. Okay, we got juices coming out, but you can see there's still a little bit of red there. So when that turns clear, that's when we're pulling them out. We're almost there. Looking real good. You can see all the little brown bits in the pan. That's all flavor. All right, see how those juices have cleared up now? There's no longer blood. It's just clear juice coming out. So these are ready to come out. All right, we got our hamburgers out. Remember, we flip them over and we season the other side. Just like that. Now we have a skillet. We want about a quarter cup 
of oil left in the skillet and I would say we're about there. We started with two tablespoons of vegetable oil and we've got about another tablespoon of fat out of the meat. So we're going to add a half of a large onion to the party. And we're going to get that stirred up and get those sweaty. Now if you don't like onions you can just skip them but I like some onions in my gravy and that's what we're making. We're going to bring our fire back up to uh, high heat. We turned it down while we getting everything pulled together. We cooked our hamburger on medium heat. So once these get soft, we're going to go with our next step. Alright, the onions are soft, so at this point we're going to add some salt and pepper. Pretty nifty, huh? Probably about a half a teaspoon of each. My brother-in-law Vince got us these. Just turn them upside down and they come on. I like quite a bit of pepper in my gravy. Now remember, with our gravy ratio, we got a quarter cup of fat, so we add a quarter cup of flour to that, right? Very easy. I took all the guesswork out of it for you. So we're going to stir this around in a pan till that flour is all incorporated and there's no more white color. It's as easy as it can be, folks. If you haven't checked out our Sauce and Gravy 101 video, you really need to check that out. Because if you aren't married, if you learn how to make sauces and gravies, you're not going to be single very long. Alright, everything is incorporated in there. So now we're going to go with our two cups liquid. We're going to use our homemade sauce or homemade stock. So we want to dump all of our liquid in at once. Remember, we can those in pint jars, so that's two cups already. So that's real convenient, and that's why we did it. So the cold liquid cools off the pan. It also gets up any brown bits that are on the bottom. If you can see, you can see when it gets thicker that that bottom will be absolutely clean. So also what we're going to add at this point is some mushrooms. I like to keep these canned mushrooms in the pantry because it's hard to keep fresh mushrooms on hand because they go bad. So uh, if I need them, I have them in a pinch. So as this comes to a boil, it's going to get thicker and thicker. And I know you've heard me say it a hundred times on this channel, but once it comes to a boil for a second, it's as thick as it's going to get until it cools off. Or you can continue to cook it, and as more moisture comes out of it, it'll get thicker. But the ratio that I give you with the quarter cup, quarter cup, and the two cups of liquid, it should be just about right as soon as it boils. Now, you don't have to use stock in this. If you prefer like a white gravy, you would use milk. Or if you wanted a little wine in it, you could use maybe half stock or half stock or half water, half wine or something. Remember, you can use any liquid you want. But if you want turkey gravy, you'd use turkey stock. If you want chicken gravy, use chicken stock. Whatever. Super easy, super cool, super versatile. So once this comes to a boil, we'll put it on low, and then we're going to add our patties back in here and just kind of let them simmer and get all warm and cozy in there. So you see the bottom of that pan, how clean it is? You can get a glimpse of it now. All right, we'll come back when that's simmering. All right, we just hit a simmer. You can see the consistency is perfect. So now let's add our patties back into the mix. There we go. We'll get some gravy up on those. We're going to turn this down way down to a simmer. And then we're going to let this get happy for a while.
So now I'm going to get a fork. We're going to check our potatoes. They should be fork tender by now. Our potatoes were ready, so we drain them. Remember, in our wherever pans, we can drain right with with the pan with a lid on it. So I added a quarter cup of butter, which is a half a stick, and about the same amount of sour cream and some salt and pepper. And if I was doing for four people, I would add double that. So we're going to get our masher and start mashing these. And remember to keep tasting as you mash them and keep adding salt until they taste really good. It takes more salt than you think. Don't over mash them or over stir them because you'll develop the gluten in those potatoes and it'll turn gloopy gloppy gross. Potatoes are coming together. I'm going to hit the uh, fire on the corn over here in the microwave because we're about six minutes from dinner. You can see our steak is simmering there. We're almost here. Our potatoes are good. I just turned the fire off on our Salisbury steak. Oh, and if you were freaking out earlier thinking that I had raw hamburger in that, I did not. I washed it. Corn is ready. We put a couple tablespoons of butter in there with the hot corn. A little bit of salt. We'll stir that up once that butter melts. If you're using canned corn, uh, drain the liquid out of the corn after it cooks and then add the butter and the salt. Tastes much better. There you go, folks. Salisbury steak. That's a dinner any newlywed would be happy to serve their spouse after a long day at work. That'll keep you married right there. So literally a 30-minute meal. It's not hard. It's super tasty. Your spouse is going to love it. Uh, highly recommend you try this. It's super easy. Switch out the proteins if you want. You could switch out the vegetable. You can go crazy with this. You could uh, do a different mash, like a cauliflower mash or something like that. So just build on it, and pretty soon, you're the greatest cook around. All right, that wraps it up. We hope you enjoyed this little, quick little tutorial. Stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. Come back and see us here at Mark Kelly Farm for more good stuff.